So the DECLARE study was a uh, randomized trial of a diabetes agent, apagliflozin, which is from the class of the SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, the reason that uh, we did this trial uh, is that patients with diabetes are at very high risk for cardiovascular events, both ischemic events like stroke and, and myocardial infarction, uh, but also heart failure, uh, that uh, patients with diabetes have a very high incidence of heart failure when they have these events uh, they, uh, they generally do worse than patients without diabetes. So there's interest in, in trying to understand the safety and efficacy of new drugs uh, from this, uh, this standpoint. Uh, so we designed this trial uh, to test uh, dapagliflozin and look to see if it could uh, e at least be safe, but also potentially improve uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Uh, so the DECLARE TIMI58 study uh, was a randomized trial. Uh, we enrolled uh, 17,160 patients. Uh, patients could come in uh, with type 2 diabetes and either uh, establish cardiovascular disease, so what you would call secondary prevention. Those were patients who'd previously had a myocardial infarction or a stroke or peripheral arterial disease. Uh, or patients could also come in in a primary prevention standpoint, so people who had diabetes and were at risk for cardiovascular disease. So for instance, somebody who was older than 55, had diabetes, and had either high blood pressure, elevated lipids, uh, or was an active smoker. So a very broad population, I think very representative of the diabetes population in the community. Uh, those patients were then randomized, as I mentioned, uh, and followed out for just over four years. Uh, looking at the, the two primary endpoints of major adverse cardiovascular events, or MACE, that's uh, cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke, and then also looking at the combination of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. Uh, and uh, those, uh, in addition to those, uh, we evaluated a, a whole series of additional outcomes, inclu including kidney outcomes and, and safety outcomes. Uh, so we, uh, the, the primary findings of the trial uh, were that uh, dapagliflozin reduced uh, cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure uh, in the primary outcome by about 17 percent. Uh, it was highly statistically significant. Uh, this was driven largely by a reduction in the hospitalization for heart failure, which ultimately was reduced by about 27 percent. Uh, when we looked at the MACE outcomes, the ischemic outcomes, we saw that the, the drug was safe with respect to MACE, no increase, uh, but did not statistically reduce uh, the major adverse cardiovascular events. Now that said, uh, looking at additional secondary outcomes we consider to be uh, exploratory, uh, but we did see a uh, marked reduction in uh, the progression of, of kidney disease. So about 24 percent uh, fewer patients had progression in their, in their kidney disease. So from an efficacy standpoint, the major benefits were reduction in heart failure and improvement uh, in the, in the uh, progression of kidney disease. Uh, we also uh, looked at a series of, of safety outcomes, and I think that the important part about this was that uh, the safety events were quite, quite reassuring. So there have been some previous concerns with SGLT2 inhibitors, particularly in relationship uh, to increases in stroke or increases in um, amputations of the lower extremities, and we really didn't see anything like that, so that, that was very reassuring. The safety outcomes that were observed, uh, there was a slight increase in genital infections, which is well known in this class, and uh, events were extremely rare, but there were more diabetic ketoacidosis uh, events in, in, the, in the treatment arm. But, but overall, I think compar uh, in comparison to what had been known previously, uh, very reassuring safety findings. With the, with the publication and the presentation of DECLARE, uh, I think what we're starting to see is a, a real consensus around the uh, effects of these uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. In fact, in addition to the main uh, publication, we presented a meta-analysis of the three large cardiovascular outcome trials. And I would say that the key messages from that are that the benefits in terms of reduction of ischemic events of MACE are, are modest. And those events seem to be re uh, you know, really confined to the people who've already had a previous event. But when we look at hospitalization for heart failure, when we look at uh, kidney events, uh, there's a robust reduction in each of those types of events that really didn't depend on, on prior treatment. So I would say compared to other, uh, other trials, we had a broader population. Uh, and this really is the first trial to show that for patients who don't already have cardiovascular disease, uh, 
uh, that the SGLT2 inhibitors have the potential to, to offer a benefit. So with, with these results showing uh, benefit in a broader population of patients, uh, I think that the, the major implication is that it is uh, reasonable and in fact appropriate to begin using SGLT2 inhibitors earlier in the course of a patient's disease. So many of the guidelines in uh, diabetes and cardiology have focused on or recommended uh, primarily use of SGLT2 inhibitors in patients who already have heart disease. And these data suggest that really there is a benefit all along the spectrum. So I think the major contribution would be to say that uh, in patients, you know, after metformin, uh, your patients who have diabetes, even if they're just at risk for heart disease, there's the potential to benefit them in terms of their heart and their kidneys with these drugs. I think also, uh, as I explained in the results, the, uh, the safety results were quite reassuring. So I think some of the people who were concerned about using these drugs in certain subsets of patients who may have been at risk uh, for stroke or amputation, that this alleviates that somewhat. So, you know, one of the ways that, um, you know, I think we can think about uh, these results, uh, and in addition to, to the results with the SGLT2 inhibitors, there are now some data with the GLP-1 uh, receptor antagonists that show cardiovascular benefit, that we ought to be uh, thinking more about um, how we lower blood sugar as opposed to how much. And what I mean by that is that we should be using agents that we know provide benefit in terms of real outcomes as opposed to just those that affect uh, your, uh, the blood tests and blood sugar results.